Alright. Francesca Maximum tried breaking the ice that grew over, but even she didn't know what to say. It was an uncomfortable 10 seconds before she finally picked a topic. As I said, before we are here, to mark areas where there's still high concentrations of collapse radiation. There's going to be a joint operation with the military soon within this region. We were sent to scout out the dangerous spots to avoid. FN Francesca's face had an annoyed look before a grin set in. I'll help you out. There've been a few storms while I've been out here, so I know where those danger zones can be found. You have to do something for me though. Maximum met her gaze and motioned her to continue. There's a few of these bunkers around the region, but there is one I would consider my main home. I want you to report that bunker as irradiated so I can hide out the operation. Maximum gave it a second of thought before holding out her hand to Francesca. Deal. I'm not done. There's also a big nest of alleds you have to help me with. I don't feel safe with it around, and I don't think your commander will either. Even so, Maximum continued to hold out her hand, and repeated once more. Deal. Francesca's turned to think for a second, before she eagerly grabbed Maximum's hand and shook, wearing a smile like the FNC back at base. Francesca turned around, and walked towards the machines on the opposite side of the room near where the elods jump down. I look around to see Owen analyzing the remains of the spider elods that attacked. Francesca began turning on one of the machines before turning to face Maximum and die. These are 3D printers left by the military. So long as you have the file you'll be able to print whatever you want, including ammo and weapon parts. If we are going to head out we are going to need some more ammo and magazines. Since we don't know what's out there, she points to me. What ammo do you use? 0.55 boys, I responded. Francesca stared at me for a little, sighed, and held out her hand. I pulled out a spare magazine, and passed it to her. She tried opening a door on the side of the machine, jiggling the handle, until she gave the machine a swift kick and it loosened. Pulling out the cartridges, Francesca stuck the empty magazine into the machine, and looked at my ammo, while a bright light came from the opening. With the strength of a doll she pulled apart the ammo and placed the pieces and gunpowder in the machine one by one. After a few minutes she did eventually look back up and pointed at Maximum and Owen. What about you two? 9 by 19. 9 mm. Thank you, some reasonable ammo. Francesca looked me right in the eyes as she said that. While she processed Maximum and Owen's magazines, Owen came up between Maximum and I. I think I figured out what the LED was. Some kind of wolf spider, I can't pinpoint the exact species. Anyways, these are prowling spiders, so they don't really make webs. They don't make noise either, I didn't hear them at all. Even when they were charging us, I heard the legs skitter, but I didn't hear anything else. Really? Fascinating a unique thing about spider legs is they are hydraulics. They use fluid pressure to move which is why their legs curl up when they die. Hydraulic? I stare at the machine Francesca just turned on. I thought that was just machines in here, but if she just turned those on, I guess I did hear them. Are you sure these LED mutations are random? All the ones we've encountered so far have been useful adaptations for them. Speaking of which, how do animals even adapt to these new predators? Francesca answered this one from behind the machine. They don't. The animals sense collapse storms coming and will cross the ridge to be in the drier region of the mountain. They are just now coming back, but most animals will just avoid the elids. Elids are territorial to begin with, so it's not that hard for animals to know to stay away. And the insects can't travel, so they end up staying. Explains why all the elids we've faced have been insects. Those are the main ones I encounter out here too. They're rare but, if you get them early enough they're no problem. She motioned to the spider elids. I haven't been around here in a while so those had some time to grow. Either rainwater got in, or they moved in themselves. Francesca pulled out a crate and sat down. It's going to take a few hours for the ammo and magazines to finish. I set it to print three full magazines for all of you and your dummies. After some back quote thank yous were said, another uncomfortable silence set in. Maximum started another line of questioning. So what are you doing out here? I mean this and this bunker specifically. Francesca motioned her head towards the other printing machine in the room. That one right has a broken motor in the arm, but it can still dispense. If you have the patience you can use it to freehand whatever you want to print. 
Owen's head perked up. Didn't you just say those machines take hours? And the precision for more complex designs would be incredible. There's not exactly much to do out here, so I have plenty of time. As for the act itself, well it's just like decorating a cake. To show off her handiwork, Francesca lifts her weapon, so we can all see it from the side. The gun is very obviously worn with the gun metal being dull, warped, and even a crack in the buttstock. Most noticeably, however, is the foregrip and the cover of the pistol grip being a much lighter shade of grey from the rest of the gun. I've had to replace some of the parts that were damaged, before I learned how to print ammo I used my gun to hit some of the elites, if I ran into them. I was going to print another budstock, before I saw you guys, I wasn't sure if you were refugees or griffin collection dolls. Another silence, this time with the implication that we would betray her. Owen decided to put an end to it this time. You said it'd take a few hours for the printer? Well it's already late, so we should just go to sleep for the night. I agreed and called over my dummy to pull some supplies when Maximum crouched down next to me. Let me turn in the report tonight, I'll see what I can do. Maximum grabbed the radio and asked Francesca to follow us. Right outside the bunker, Maximum set up the radio and began the call. The radio uses a headset for the operator, so Francesca couldn't hear what was being said but I could. Jeez, I was waiting for you guys. I'm about to miss dinner sitting here. Thank goodness. The commander wasn't there to receive the report, instead it was Olympia 72. Even so we couldn't lie, since she is still a representative of the commander. Alrightly, give me the rundown. We were able to find a few more locations, even some old nests abandoned by whatever elids were there. We'll send you a list of those coordinates later. Do it after 20 hundred hours please, that's when my shift ends and I don't want to pull up maps again. Will do. We found a bunker, we believe it was ex-military, possibly used by Sangvas at some point but recently abandoned. I could hear the clack of a keyboard on the other side of the radio. Alright, and finally the commander wanted a head count of your team. He wants to know if you lost any more dummies. Oh no. Maximum and I know what's coming next. There's currently 7 of us on the operation. There's only 6 of us left after one of Maximum's dummies were destroyed, and judging by the click of Francesca's safety she's realized the same. I take a step between her and Maximum and hold my hand out to stop her from raising her rifle. Please, just trust her, I plead in a hushed whisper. Francesca stares back at me. She returns her rifle to a carrying position, but doesn't re-engage the safety. 7. Olympia's confusion is clear, says right here you lost a dummy a few days ago. We encountered another doll in the bunker. I hear Francesca's motors were. She said she would assist us in our mission, since she knows the region. Wow, that's convenient but why, is she out there? Her company sent her out here but never picked her up. AWW that's sad. Tell her she can join us in Griffin if she wants, I don't think the commander would complain to more new hires. We can't hire her, she still technically has a contract with her old company. Not to mention we can't hire someone who is already a Griffin member. Done. Tell her to get somewhere safe during our operation at least. Don't want her getting caught in the crossfire. HMM. I'm going to Honest Maxim. Our field reports are filled in with drop down menus in order to make it faster. Thing is, there's no way to report you're receiving support from a contracted doll. I'm just going to say that a local is helping you out, since that's the closest option. That's fine. You have a good night, Olympia. You guys too. With that, Maximum shuts down the radio and turns around to find a furious Francesca. Maximum returns her gaze with a small smile. Francesca breaks eye contact first to look at me before storming back into the bunker. I position myself next to Maximum. Good thing you were an attorney. Good thing Olympia is an idiot.